That's hardware. Now, let's go back to software. We've seen some great built-in applications, some all new built-in applications. But now let's talk about third-party applications. Let's talk about the App Store. And to help me do that, I'd like to invite up Scott Forrestal, our Senior Vice President of iPhone Software. Scott. Thank you. Good morning. The App Store has been a huge success. We launched it just about a year and a half ago. And already, our customers have downloaded over 3 billion apps, choosing from among the more than 140,000 apps available on the store. Well, we built the iPad to run virtually every one of these apps unmodified right out of the box. Now, we can do that in two ways. We can run these apps with pixel-for-pixel -pixel accuracy black boxed in the center of the screen. We can also automatically pixel double and run those apps full screen. This is really cool. Let me go ahead and show you how it works. So here I have uh, an iPad. We downloaded a number of apps from the App Store, all unmodified. And let me launch just a couple for you. We'll start with Facebook. Here it is. This is the Facebook that you know and love. It just works. I can tap on a photo. I can flick to a new photo. And now, if you look in the bottom right corner of the screen, there's a button that says 2x. When I tap on it, we automatically scale the application up to full screen. When I go back to my news feed, I can switch, say, to my profile, see my wall. It all just works. Now, Facebook uses a lot of text, photos, and some video. But what about an application that really drives the graphics hardware? What about a game? Let me go ahead and launch a game here. This comes from ESPN, and it's called X Games Snowcross. Now you can see at the beginning of this game, it plays a video. The video works great on the iPad. Can you say never say die attitude? Yeah. Oh, super smooth and look at that. Nice. A big extension drive to get down on the inside. The All right, let's skip the rest of the video here and get right to the game. So our race, an arcade. Go ahead and choose the default. I will race uh, Breckenridge with Levi, and let's go. So here you can see this is an OpenGL ES game. So it really drives the graphics hardware. And again, this is an unmodified game right off the App Store. I'm steering it with the accelerometer. And even the game, I can take full screen. So you can see, hey, some tricks. Uh, you can see that even with an OpenGLES game, very graphically intense, you get tremendous frames. And I have to say, having played uh, some games on here, they're smooth and they're incredibly fun. So, so there you go. Right out of the App Store, unmodified. So the great thing is, all of those iPhone apps that you know and love, that you've already been running, will run on your iPad. In fact, when you buy your new iPad, just take it home, hook it up to iTunes, download all those apps that you already have right onto your iPad, and you're good to go. Now, if the developer spends some time modifying their application, they can take full advantage of this large touchscreen display. And you can see, that's what we did for all of our applications. We rewrote the user interface of every one of our apps to take full advantage of this large touchscreen display that comes with the iPad, like photos, and music, calendar, and YouTube. They all look great. And we expect developers are going to want to do the same thing. So to that end, we've enhanced the iPhone SDK 
to now support development for the iPad as well. And we're releasing this SDK today. So developers, <laughs> developers can go to apple.com today and download the SDK and get going. And this SDK even includes an iPad simulator so you can run your iPad apps right on your Mac as you develop them. You know, we think it's going to be a whole other gold rush for developers as they build apps for the iPad. And of course, every iPad comes with the App Store loaded up on it. So you have a great distribution channel to get your apps out to all of our customers. Now, we're going to take and highlight and feature all of the apps that are built specifically for the iPad in the store. You'll still be able to get to all of the iPhone apps, but if you create an application specifically for the iPad, we're going to put it front and center. Now, we're, we're really excited about the possibilities for developers on the iPad. And so, just about two weeks ago, we invited a few developers to Apple to give them a sneak peek at the iPad and see what they could create in just a couple short weeks. And I'd like to invite a few of them on stage to show you what they've created, starting with Gameloft. Gameloft is one of the largest developers of games for the iPhone and iPod Touch. They have over 60 games on the App Store that have been downloaded more than 55 million times. To show you what they've been able to do in just a couple weeks on the iPad, I'd like to invite up Mark Hickey. Mark. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Good morning. Today, my colleague Bogdan and I are here to show you some amazing new gameplay mechanics that we've worked into our award-winning first-person shooter called Nova. So what's different about Nova on the iPad versus Nova on the iPhone or the iPod Touch? Well, when you hold the device in your hands, you'll see the display is just huge, which makes the game immensely fun to play. But the size also gives you a lot more flexibility when it comes to controlling the game. For example, I can slide the D-pad up and down the side of the screen. Or if I want to quickly access some firepower, I can drag the rocket launcher down next to the fire button. So with the control set up how we like, take a look at the bottom left corner of the screen. We've added a mini-map, and you can stretch the mini-map mini -map out across the screen just by dragging the corner with your finger. When we do that, you'll notice that there's this red dot on the screen. This tells us that there's an enemy nearby. Well, another cool feature that we've added is that now you, you can slide two fingers across the screen to throw grenades, like so. Nice shot. So the iPad gives us the ability to interact with the game world in ways that weren't really possible before. In order to open these airlocks, you physically apply three fingers to the control disc and turn your hand in order to for the passage to open. Now, we all know that first-person shooters are about combat, so we designed a system that we're calling MTA, Multiple Target Acquisition. With the rocket launcher selected, you can drag a targeting box around a group of enemies and then fire on all of them simultaneously. Check it out. Definitely useful when you're outgunned and outnumbered. Now this is what we were able to accomplish in just a few short days working with this exciting new hardware. The games look incredible at this higher resolution and the form factor opens up countless new doors for us in terms of game design. You'll be able to see what else we have in store for you when the iPad version of Nova ships later this year. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Great stuff. Next up, the New York Times. The New York Times has been publishing a newspaper for more than 150 years. It's commonly referred to as the paper of record, with a huge readership both nationally and internationally. It also produces one of the best web news sites in the world, and one of my favorites. To tell you about their plans for the iPad, I'd like to invite up Martin Nissenholtz. Martin. Thanks, Scott. It's great to be here today. I want to introduce my colleague, Jennifer Brook, the interaction designer on this application. 